One of the most common things that I steal is watches. I tell people, uh, in three minutes, I'm gonna be wearing your watch. Try to catch me, if you can. And that would be the game. If you were gonna steal my watch, how would you do that? Uh, so this is more of an expose of it, but if I may see your hand. So yours doesn't come over the end of the wrist, but if you close your hand kind of tight, creates a little bit of tension so your wrist gets wider. At the same time, while you're focused on your watch, you lost the cell phone that's in your front pocket. Check your front pocket, see if it's still there. It is. So that's what it looks like. That's the watch too. Well, stealing the watch, uh, I think, is a lot like hunting rabbits. Uh, if you've ever tried to sneak up on a rabbit as a kid, uh, you see it munching the grass, you come close, its ears perk up, and you wait until it goes back to munching the grass and you come forward again. Same thing with the watch. You do it in small steps. I do it, I see if you're alert to it. I do another step, I do another step. That was a very fast process for a watch to do. Uh, something that's slower that you can do is as I'm shaking someone's hand and I'm holding here, I can open their watch with, in a handshake. The watch is virtually loose. The reason why I can't feel it is because with these three fingers, I hold the watch closed. So they perceive that the watch is still fastened. What I can also do is now at this point, uh, they have control, and that's a big thing, is them having the illusion that they're in control. Uh, so if I'm at this point, I say, your watch is safe. Do you have anything in this pocket? But now, when I come across, you see my arm hits here, but I flipped out the watch so that I can drop it in this outside jacket pocket. When I come back, I say, oh, you, you were wearing a watch a while ago. They've never let go of my hand. My other hand was over here, so it seems like I would have had a third hand in order to be able to steal <laughs> that watch, and they think that they're in control. So, Paul, let, let, let's talk about the difference between how you work as a pickpocket and how a street pickpocket works. I think of it a lot like a magician, but it has a different flavor in that it comes from street crimes, and I think they're kind of related. They're both uh, focused on sleight of hand and misdirection. Generally on the street, they don't want you to remember their face. They don't want to talk to you too much. But this is more heavily geared towards focusing attention, playing with attention in a show. What it allows you to do is show the audience the behind the scenes of how the process works, which you normally don't get to see in magic. You know, I would imagine that one of your bread and butter steals is the is a, a wallet from the inside jacket pocket. On the street, that would be a harder steal uh, because Again, you'd have to see my face. In performance, it is something that I do. So you've got a wallet in this outside jacket pocket. Yep. And uh, do you have anything on your jacket pocket over here? Uh, okay. If you would, would you check your front pocket over this way? That's the steal. So I'm extracting the wallet out. And then I'd have you check, is this your wallet? You feel it sits there. I hold it with my pinky and I grab your lapels, but it's actually outside of your pocket now, but when you see my hand come out, you feel like you have it. Totally. And as this hand goes up to touch here, it lets go of the wallet, so the wallet falls down your jacket, and this hand catches it. So as I go here, I grab it, but now your, arm, your sight line is blocked by this arm. I extract from here, go up to your shoulder, talk to you for a moment, as I come in, I hand it across the back of your neck, then I can do this row and add some flourish to it. You have a lot of incredible physical strategies and moves to, to steal, but what ties it all together is your ability to follow the wanderings of my attention, or as you put it, to surf my attention. Yes, uh, because each person is different in how they operate their attention and how engaged they are, because their priority system is different. So I have to decide, are they with me, or has their attention shifted to something else? So the important part is the trust. Uh, it's kind of like a force field or a little security zone, and you set that off when I step into your space. So I'm, I'm at it right now. Uh, but you know, it's even here, we're kind of at 45 degree angle, so as I'm coming into it. Uh, but as long as I'm keeping eye contact with you, it allows me to raise your suspicion level. Same thing, if I go here and I keep eye contact with you all the way, it's rather suspicious and you keep very focused on me. But if I want to get underneath that, I can break your eye contact as I go into the space and share a common view with you, like a confluence of looking at something. And now I'm very close inside your space. Now if I don't want you to focus on this anymore, I can just look at you and that draws your attention up into this triangle. And you're less interested in what's happening here, but allows me to do things here while your focus is here. You've got this spotlight that just moves back and forth. If you think about where the spotlight is, the dark space around that spotlight is where I dance. So basically I just play in the dark around where your attention is moving.
I would think that the most difficult steal uh, is taking something out of someone's front pants pocket. That's an urban myth. <laughs> well, here in the States, it's very common. There's two things. One, keep it in your front pocket. Two, put a rubber band around it. Both of those don't really help. Well, because it seems to me that, you know, I can, I, I, I have a cell phone in my pocket. I can feel it. It's against my thigh. I can see so, that. And if someone goes, <laughs> if someone goes, you know, rummaging around in there, I'm going to, I'm going to notice it. Yeah, that's why you don't rummage. <laughs> so what I may do is reach underneath your arm and grab something. I said, do you have anything inside of here? Could you, is there anything inside of here? And a lot of times people will naturally grab hold of their jacket for me because they don't want to, me to necessarily hold it. But what that does is it now opens up this frame for me to steal. So as I go to look inside your jacket too, a lot of times people will open up and they're looking inside. What, I'm now down inside your pants pocket. You're not aware that my fingers are in your pocket, but if I want to uh, step across and say, also, can you step one step over this way for me? And just with your foot, that allows me to extract the cell phone out of your pocket. You think that the, what you're feeling is the side of my leg, but it's actually your phone coming out of your pocket. And as I step back, I did not feel it. I really didn't feel it. And yeah, I, knew and I also got some sugar packets of money or something That's like right. that. <laughs> it's the family yeah. fortune.